thank you very much for uh, letting us opening the lightning talk session here at Foster. So I'm Erik Josefsson from Electronic Frontier Foundation. I'm European Affairs Coordinator, and this is Edan Katz uh, that will speak uh, for the last seven minutes of this presentation. Uh, he's EFF's new uh, International Affairs Director. Um, I would just like to touch on um, two uh, privacy-related uh, dossiers and then talk a bit about um, intellectual property-related uh, political decision processes. And the first one is the Data Retention Directive. Uh, I think you know it was adopted by the European Parliament in two years ago. It is an, um, uh, a new way of looking at um, some basic principles of, of uh, law that you are um, innocent until the opposite is proven. That this is uh, now being maybe broken by <coughs> saving data from all your telecommunications interactions with each other. And uh, this has huge, uh, 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 huge implications on, of course, privacy, human rights, but also on the technical level, where I th hope that um, you as technicians can be helpful and engaged in understanding what is going on here and what, is, what <coughs> will happen with, with the basic information infrastructures in Europe. And this is a quote from the responsible politician that was the rapporteur for this directive uh, one week uh, before the vote in the parliament. He basically said, we don't know anything about this. It turns out that two years later, the commission is also having problems to understand how they were going to implement this directive. Um, there, there's a working group, the Recycle 14 working group uh, that the co commission has set up where they talk about the implementation and there are many, many questions regarding this directive. On the legal side, we have then in this implementation process, one of the most successful organizations that have been is trying to uh, make sure or trying to stop this implementation is the German Working Group Against State Retention, the ACA Forat. Um, then they have recently filed um, class action lawsuit against the implementation proposal by the German uh, uh, government um, and they're complaining at the institutional court. And this will have implications uh, for uh, far reaching far beyond Germany. So I encourage you to follow this process and uh, interact with your politicians and your uh, government on what this, if uh, the implementation legislation is rejected, what effects it could have on your country. The second uh, proposal here regarding privacy is the PNR proposal. Uh, so when uh, data retention is supposed to save all your telecommunications data, this proposal uh, is aiming at making um, a profile over each citizen's travel behavior, starting with uh, your flight travels, so uh, and for um, enforce criminal or law enforcement purposes, uh, all of you uh, will be uh, have a profile so that you can ch be checked in case you would be interesting to look at. Um, there's also a very important technical aspect here uh, that I want to mention. The, the, this personal name record will be, um, it's a part of the, of the booking system that is a, it's a global network. It was really, uh, um, um, until the mid-90s, um, uh, larger than internet. So it's a big mainframe system uh, for, for that is um, uh, still mainly based on the same uh, uh, old system as maybe 30, 40 years it has been just running. So the, the passenger names and records are, are uh, created when you make a booking 
and that are then being processed by these CRSs, uh, the computerized reservation systems. And there are four major companies working on that. One of them is European, and that is Amadeus. Right, and the PNR record, you know, when you make a booking, it, it contains a lot of information, but the also from this um, design of the system, there's a lot of free text fields, and basically a PNR cannot be deleted. Um, then uh, the Commissioner Fratini's pr proposal is to save, to set up um, institutions in all member states that will take care of this data and make this profile per individual uh, per, per citizen. And um, this, this uh, personal no passenger information unit, uh, it has some similarities with the uh, um, Department of Home and Security, and there's a technical issue here whether how this information is stored or transferred if it's not basically just they are logged in. And those records will be stored for 13 years. And uh, then here comes the important uh, technical aspect that uh, in the political debate about this um, proposal, everybody says, of course, we we sensitive information should not be there, like trade union membership. Uh, and, but if you look at the specification, uh, what you want to store is then uh, in the proposal you have 19 items. Two of them, uh, if you look closely at them, will uh, then show that the uh, things like a trade union membership um, will probably be uh, in, the, in, your, in this profile. So with the <coughs> things like this in place, uh, if we would have a return of uh, Richelieu that is famous for um, chopping off heads during the French Revolution. Uh, he said, uh, give me six lines uh, written by the most honorable of men and I will find an excuse in them to hang him. I wonder what he would do with the uh, uh, PNR records and, 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 uh, and uh, data retention. <coughs> and the correct answer to that um, question is then what is in the, our political tradition a central concept of organizing our political institutions so that when bad or incompetent rulers come into power, they don't make too much damage. It's a bit like system uh, design. How do you prevent um, users from making damage uh, unintentionally and how do you protect <coughs> yourself from malicious uh, um, yeah, attacks? So that was for, for um, on the privacy front. And then uh, what I've been doing uh, lately is following the uh, things in the European Parliament quite closely. And just to mention two reports here, uh, the Bono report, maybe you've heard of that. And uh, the problem here is that uh, these reports are uh, unrelated. Uh, they are about culture and uh, not about intellectual property, really. But in these processes, you see uh, agenda set, agenda uh, items from uh, the copyright industry inserted in these um, direct uh, this, these reports. So it's about um, filtering in the internet. Uh, here's an interesting one for you, uh, the Grasamor report. S uh, for some reason, the open source community poses an unprecedented threat, <coughs> and 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 uh, we have to take care of that and eradicate counterfeit and piracy. And, and this very uh, aggressive language, um, we have to find a way to communicate uh, our constituencies' concerns to the politicians involved. And now, Eden is going to be more concrete in what EFF's uh, projects, uh, how... Thank you, Eric, uh, for sharing your talk with me. I'm the new International Affairs Director um, with the uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation and um, really uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you uh, to build off of where uh, Eric left off. Uh, the Grasso Moore Report is, in particular, uh, a, a strategy for culture in a, a European, the European agenda for culture in a globalizing world. 
and I pose to you the question um, as to whether or not uh, you can participate in deciding what that culture is. And I think there's an opportunity to do that, and the EFF is supportive of that and uh, would like to encourage you um, to not let uh, the politicians only um, with, uh, with, with small private interests uh, uh, communicate with them in order to decide what the European agenda will be uh, in the digital world, in a globalizing world, but for your voice to be heard as well. IPRED 2 is um, uh, IP Enforcement Directive. Um, uh, uh, the offenses, um, the idea behind uh, this comprehensive strategy that Eric began to lay out and has been following in detail and has uh, uh, done important work here um, at the Commission, um, the, uh, 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 the, the point is to increase um, deterrence and the ability for um, uh, there to be people scared by criminal offenses. Uh, ratchet up the, um, the offenses for copyright infringement, and therefore people will stop doing that. Uh, coming from the United States, I can uh, share that uh, that has not worked. The, net, the No Electronic Theft Act, which was passed in 1998, uh, contains some of the same ideas um, and has been a failure in terms of deterrence. Um, there may be something else going on. Um, the uh, uh, wrong way. Um, uh, there, uh, this is actually what it was adopted by Parliament, which includes um, the fact that uh, focusing these provisions and, and uh, the criminalization of copyright on obtaining a commercial advantage. This is recognizable as uh, uh, um, uh, set up warehouses and, 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 uh, and, and uh, illicit networks um, that, that, that feed off of um, uh, unauthorized copies. But the concern is um, actually in seeing whether or not um, they're, they're, uh, uh, how far this extends. And I think in that question, um, uh, why is it not working? In that question, there's one amendment where it was actually stopped through the efforts of a uh, coalition of uh, FFII um, and uh, Buick and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, um, Edlida and EFF uh, together um, uh, helped stop this part of the provision, the amendment that you should pay attention to, which expands beyond this commercial advantage to basically everyone. Um, if you, uh, we can go and talk in particular later, um, given the time constraints. But this language actually tries to expand it so that even peer-to-peer -peer file sharing on a very minor basis of, uh, of, of, of works that are combined, both copyrighted and public domain, can also be captured in that. And this is, uh, this is oriented towards the ISPs. And so there's um, a, a, a strategy that we should become aware of, that you should uh, participate in, and your opportunity to participate is in communicating uh, with your uh, uh, politicians. Those politicians that you voted for, ask them, uh, because the member states are the ones that, uh, that, that, that are part of this process um, uh, in deciding. Uh, the Creative Content Online is one of the consultations that um, is uh, coming out of the um, uh, uh, Info Society um, uh, uh, DG. And uh, this actually asks questions also about um, ISP filtering, uh, but also about DRM and interoperability. And uh, if we look under the hood, we see that there's actually a plan being laid out um, to support uh, certain, um, uh, certain uh, aspects like the robots, uh, changes to the robots TXT file to allow search engines to filter through that through, through uh, copyrighted content and make sure that um, uh, that stuff has not become available. Um, and the consultation uh, till the February 29th encourage individuals and organizations uh, to look at this consultation and try to participate. Um, the DVB, CPCM, um, this is another part of the strategy deep in the layers. Uh, in broadcast TV, the implementation of DRM, uh, there's a question posed um, uh, to, to, to Europeans about the uh, impact of DRM and the experience of DRM and whether or not we should have a uh, digital television future that includes uh, uh, that kind of content control. Um, the, um, and, 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 and that's part of this entire strategy, and I'm sort of uh, trying to go through that. To, uh, we're talking about all the developments in, in the open source software world. There's also developments taking place in the policy world that you need to be aware of that are actually going to affect the way that you can uh, uh, do your work. Um, and, uh, and, and EFF would like to support that, would like to um, uh, be in contact with you and, uh, become, and, and, and encourage you to actually bring these discussions to uh, your member states, to your individual countries. And um, EFF, uh, in coordination and collaboration with others, um, is trying to 
um, is, 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 is hoping uh, to set an example and facilitate that kind of effort. Thanks for your time, and uh, hopefully talk to you later.